Hello again everyone, Vince Lau here with Rob Arnfield with another POCUS TEE series case from the westernsono.ca website. Today we'll be going over the interrogation of valves to assess for endocarditis using TEE. Much like anything in point of care, many of the investigations we do are primarily as a rule-in modality, especially for beginning learners who are just starting out. The literature states that the transthoracic sensitivity for rule-out of endocarditis is around 45 to 70 percent, whereas its specificity is about 85 to 95 percent. Contrast this to transesophageal echo, and the sensitivity is around 90 to 100 percent, and same with its specificity. Since the specificity of TEE for endocarditis is quite high, helping to rule in endocarditis, even in the point of care setting, can be very helpful. Ruling out infective endocarditis, however, requires a specialized skill set which takes extra training and many TE studies performed and read to be proficient at. Hence the years of echocardiography training that a cardiologist will do to specialize in echo. And this is especially true for prosthetic valves. However, for native valve endocarditis, with time and practice, intensivists, cardiac anesthetists, and other trained professionals can also perform TE endocarditis ruleouts. Intensivists are endorsed by the International Consensus Training Statement on Advanced Critical Care Echocardiography. The consensus statement endorses the usage of advanced critical care echo to assess and rule out infective endocarditis, and hopefully the screencast will help you learn that. The bottom line is, if you're going to use point-of-care TE for endocarditis, especially as a beginning user, you may want to use it more as a rule-in rather than a rule-out and order a formal transthoracic or transesophageal echo from cardiology or another trained subspecialist in TEE to rule out endocarditis until you're able to do advanced training. Again, as a disclaimer, this is not a comprehensive overview of TEE and we will be highlighting certain views to hone in on endocarditis of valves. For a more comprehensive overview of TEE, please consider the options listed. Getting to the case, we have a male admitted with septic shock from MSSA bacteremia from known IV drug use. He has multiple septic emboli, including to the lungs as septic pulmonary emboli, to the CNS, brain and spinal cord with meningitis, a right MCA stroke with hemorrhagic transformation, and cervical osteomyelitis, as well as an epidural abscess. The joints are affected as well with the right knee having septic arthritis requiring IND and the spleen which has new infarcts. A TE was sought after to rule out endocarditis as a source. So getting to our normal case example and moving in a systematic fashion to look at endocarditis, we start here with a mid-esophageal four-chamber view at zero degrees. And we're looking primarily at the mitral valve and the tricuspid valve seen here. Remember that we need to zoom in on each of the valves individually and look at the 2D imaging for vegetations but also the color Doppler to look for regurgitant compromise of a valve eaten up by endocarditis. As a general rule, if there's no valve regurgitation, there's less likely to be endocarditis, unless it's very early in the process. We see here we put a color box over top the mitral valve, and we only see a few jets of trace MR. The next thing we need to do is zoom in on the mitral valve to look for vegetations which are not present in this patient. We now move the color box over to the tricuspid valve, and although we see some trace TR here, we do not see any obvious signs of vegetations. And as we can see here in the zoomed in image, we do not see any vegetations present on the tricuspid valve. We then change the view to the mid-esophageal long axis view at 120 degrees, to look at the mitral valve and aortic valve concomitantly. We see here the left atrium, mitral valve, left ventricle, LVOT, aortic valve, and ascending aorta here. We next place a color box across the mitral valve seen here, and we're looking for obvious regurgitant lesions. And although there might be some trace MR here, and as evidenced by a small jet, we don't see any obvious evidence of endocarditis. The next thing that we do is move the color box over to the aortic valve to look for obvious regurgitant lesions. And in this patient, there might be some trace AI, but no obvious masses or vegetations to suggest endocarditis. Last but not least, we'll have to zoom in on the valves 
to look for any masses or lesions suggesting of vegetation or metacarditis, and they are not present in this patient on this zoomed in view. Next up is the mid-esophageal aortic valve short axis, and the aortic valve is seen here in the center. This is also called the mid-esophageal right ventricular inflow outflow view at 30 to 60 degrees, as we see the right atrium here, left atrium here, intraatrial septum seen here, tricuspid valve here, RVOT wrapping around seen here, and the pulmonic valve in view here. We put color across the aortic valve, and we might see some trace central AI that was seen in other views. Next, what we do is we throw color across the tricuspid valve again in the mid esophageal right ventricular inflow outflow view at 60 degrees. And we look for TR with color to see if there's any regurgitant lesions on the tricuspid valve. The next thing that we do is we zoom with the zoom function in on the tricuspid valve. And we're looking for any obvious vegetations again to suggest endocarditis, which are not present in this view. Next, what we do is we zoom in on the pulmonic valve, seen here in the 60 to 90 degree view, and we look for obvious vegetations again with the zoom function on the pulmonic valve, which are not present in this view. Finally, we put a color box across the pulmonic valve to look for any evidence of pulmonic insufficiency. And as we can see here, there might be a trace jet of pulmonic insufficiency. Getting to some actual case examples, we see the mitral valve seen here on the left side of the heart on screen right, and we see a vegetation on the anterior mitral valve leaflet with rupture of the chordae tendine as well. You'll notice that most vegetations on valves will be on the chamber side with the lowest flow, in this case the atrial side. As part of proper interrogation protocol, we will throw color across the mitral valve and we see severe MR with an eccentric jet that curls around the outer edge of the left atrium with the regurgitation going back into the pulmonary veins. If we were to use pulse wave Doppler, we would likely see full reversal of the pulmonary veins. Finally, we zoom in on the mitral valve to have a better look at the anterior mitral valve leaflet and the chordae rupture. And we know this is the anterior mitral valve leaflet as it is contiguous with the aortic valve apparatus, which is also known as the aortomitral curtain. And here we've gone to a mid-esophageal two-chamber view at adding 90 to 100 degrees to the omniplane angle. And we clearly see the anterior mitral valve leaflet with its vegetation on the atrial side. We then throw color across it. And here we see severe MR with a regurgitant jet profile taking up greater than 40% of the left atrium. So we're using multiple views to corroborate our findings. In this case example, we see the tricuspid valve here, seen on the right side of the heart, screen left, with a vegetation on the tricuspid valve sneaking in and out of view. Again, it is primarily on the atrial side of the tricuspid valve, as this is the low flow side of the valve. We then throw color across the tricuspid valve, and we see severe TR with a jet that would occupy greater than 40% of the right atrium, or hit the back wall of the right atrium although it's not easy to see in this view. Finally, we zoom in on the tricuspid valve to have a better look at the vegetation. And what we can do is we can freeze the image while zoomed in and see the vegetation at its largest dimensions and measure it. And as we can see here, the vegetation is measured out to be 1.5 by 1.6 centimeters, which is large in size. Anything greater than one centimeter is predictive of having embolic events from it and increased mortality. In this example, we see the aortic valve seen here on screen right, and we see a vegetation which is strand-like in nature on the non-coronary cusp of the aortic valve. There also seems to be, on the atrial side of the anterior mitral valve leaflet, another vegetation sitting on the mitral valve. We throw color across the aortic valve and we see evidence of central aortic regurgitation, which is mild in nature. We now zoom in on the aortic valve to have a better look at the non-coronary cusp and its vegetation, which is strand-like in nature, as mentioned before. This particular patient actually had both aortic valve endocarditis and mitral valve endocarditis, seen on formal echoes done by cardiology. We later move to an aortic valve short axis view, which is a bit off axis, 
and we see here the non-coronary cusps attached to the interatrial septum, as well as the left coronary cusps closer to the left atrial side and the right coronary cusps attached to the right side. We see that the vegetation is both on the non-coronary cusps, but also more so on the left coronary cusps. And last but not least, we have an example of pulmonic valve endocarditis as well, which is extremely rare. Although these images were captured on transthoracic echo, we have orientated the views as if the patient had a TE performed. So what we can see here would be the equivalent of the aortic valve short axis with the aortic valve and its Mercedes signs in the middle, with the wraparound of the RV inflow as well as outflow view seen here, RA, tricuspid valve, RVOT, and finally the pulmonic valve seen here. The intraatrial septum is in between the right atrium and the left atrium seen here. We see an echogenic mass on the pulmonic valve itself, and zooming in, we see the mass more clearly with the RVOT immediately in front and the main PA immediately behind the pulmonic valve. And finally, we hone in on the main PA seen here going up the screen, and we can clearly see a vegetation on the pulmonic valve itself with the risk of causing pulmonary embolism and septic pulmonary emboli. In case summary, this is an unfortunate gentleman with MSSA endocarditis with trivalvular involvement of the aortic, mitral, and tricuspid valves. He ultimately received cloxacillin antibiotics for approximately six weeks. Cardiovascular thoracic surgery was unable to perform open heart surgery on him to replace his valve secondary to hemorrhagic transformations of his strokes, as well as active IV drug use. Thanks once again for joining us at the westernsano.ca website. Please check out the rest of the POCUS TE series or any other content posted on the website. We hope you join us again in the future. Thank you very much and have a nice day.